and we'll get to those during the Q&A. And it's very easy to ask a question, just uh, use the chat function on the right-hand side of your screen. So with that, please welcome Levi Jordan. Everyone. I'm uh, the Software Systems Manager over at Gigaphoton. Uh, I'm a veteran of 10 plus years in the uh, semiconductor industry. I worked a lot with the tooling uh, at factories and constantly tinkered and built my own software to kind of do analysis uh, from some of the things that we lacked as a company in the whole. Um, so the complaining about our software, when we began the Fabscape project as a company, I couldn't really say no, and I've been working with Fabscape from the ground up to get it where it is today. Uh, my compatriot over here, uh, TC, will introduce himself as well. My name is Ken Song, or you can call me TC. I'm a software engineer over at Gigafoton. Things that I do include developing plugins on Fabscape, assisting in the promotion and deployment of Fabscape to customers, mainly in Singapore and Asia. So today, we are really excited to share with you the updates that we have on Fabscape. Um, here is the agenda for today. We will be doing a recap on what Fabscape is, what do we want to achieve with Fabscape, and what are the benefits. It will be the highlight of today's webinar, the Fabscape Online Sandbox. We will have the demo session where Levi will be walking us through the sandbox. The sandbox is essentially an online version of Fabscape that allows you to experience Fabscape online in a simple and hassle-free way without having the need to download any installation files and setting it up. Bring on, we'll share about the Open Platform Initiative and how we can collaborate together via the advisory program. We will end off the session with the Q&A. What is Fabscape? Fabscape is basically a collaborative platform where different equipment vendors are able to come in and share their know-hows and allow manufacturers to customize a solution that fits their specific use case. We have feature and role-based permission system in place for managing tight security data access, runs entirely on microservice architecture, it's highly customizable and facilitates custom development for either or both front and back end. Features are developed uh, easily by creating containers or inter-container communication uses gRPC. Driver system within Fatscape allows dynamic injection and removal of containers. So what this means is that manufacturers have the flexibility to develop customized plugins that they need, and they are able to include or exclude plugins and drivers to build a solution that truly works for them. All in all, or Fabscape is really, really to shatter the silos in the manufacturing process and empower manufacturers to optimize the entire solution and the entire production line as a single system. Next. In a platform environment, each equipment vendor provides their own software to manage and monitor their equipment makes monitoring and optimization via cross-vendor analytics extremely challenging. So what we want to achieve with Fatscape in the open platform environment is to be able to enable better optimization and allow data to be analyzed across 
equipment of different vendors and types as if they are part of a single cohesive system. Analogy that we can draw is to picture Fabscape as a food court. So in the food court, we have many different food stores serving different dishes and users are free to pick and choose what they would like to have. Similarly, each food store within a food court is like a driver or a plug-in that is made by different equipment vendors. Customers have the flexibility to customize and pick drivers and plug-ins that they need. If there is no food store that serves the particular dish you need, you are also free to set up your own store and serve your own unique dish. For owner, you need not review your recipes. The key is to deliver the final dish. Twice, vendors are able to decide what details and information they would like to share when building the plugins and drivers. Some definition to help you better understand the difference between a driver and a plugin. So a driver is basically the code that communicates and pull data from equipment into Fabscape. And a plugin is the code that uses the data and present it on the interface for the users. Three, Fabscape would be a centralized place where data and applications can be managed collectively. Moving on in terms of deployment on Fabscape, two ways to go about it, via Docker, and other, the other way is via Kubernetes. Spinning up Fabscape on Docker is pretty simple and straightforward. We have all the resources available for this on our website with step-by-step -step guides. All you need to do is to register for a developer account and you would be able to assess them. This setup would mainly be used for development purposes. Production, we would actually recommend uh, spinning it up on Kubernetes. This is because it is a much more robust setup for the production environment. And this is also what we do over here at Gigaphoto would require slightly more effort as compared to just the Docker setup. And it will require some knowledge in Kubernetes in order to set it up yourself. So now moving on to the highlight of this webinar, the Fabscape Online Sandbox. So one of the reasons why we have developed this sandbox is because we want to make it easy to experience and try Fabscape straight on our website. So something we have been asked about too in the past, and we have decided to work on it and make it happen. So today we are very happy and pleased to share with you the sandbox, and we will be bringing you on a tour around it. I'll now hand the time over to Levi, who would be bringing us on a tour around the sandbox. The stage is yours. Hey, thanks TC. We're going to go through the online demo from signing up to just playing around with some of the tools that have been pre-installed in the system. Uh, so let's go ahead and show what we need to do to actually get yourself access to a sandbox. We've made it hopefully not too painful. All you need to do is head over to fabscape.org. You'll be greeted with this little splash screen and you'll click on the uh, very obvious demo now button. Fill out your information, the conditions and hit demo now. It'll throw you over an email at that point. It looks like this and you simply click start my demo. This will toss you over to the demo sandbox page. like this. Upon logging in for the first time, your access code will be verified from the link in your email. Uh, but over on the right side, you'll see a couple pieces of information that will uh, really tell you about Fabscape, how to use the demo, and some more information that we'll go over later on that. Additionally, you'll have a nice little video that will give you some just quick intro. 
we'll skip that for now. The most important thing being is that you'll want to take a look up at the top and make sure that you uh, see your default login. Other than that, you can just get that page out of the way so you can see a full screen of Fabscape. Logging in for the first time, you'll be dropped into the dashboard. This is a customizable screen that individual plugins can offer uh, little squares or larger displays. Each one is customizable. And this allows a user to basically set up their dashboard how they would like. Now, over on the left side, you'll see all options for plugins, drivers, and built-in uh, little widgets. Um, so uh, if you want to see a more detailed naming, you can pop out this screen here. You can see dashboard, equipment, exception, chart, notices, system preferences, and these are your user settings. By default, uh, the system will only come with a dashboard and notices and preferences and users, but with the sandbox, we've decided to provide a few of our internally built plugins and drivers to kind of give you a little show on what you can do with the system after you've tinkered around with it a little bit and kind of display what you want to display. Now, we'll be going through each one of these and showing off certain components and how they leverage the built-in uh, core concepts that are inside of the Fabscape platform. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that back to give us a little more space. And we're going to start off with what we call the equipment plugin. Now, the equipment concept in Fabscape is to essentially say, this piece of equipment is some kind of production device. It can be whatever you imagine it to be. It could be a car, it could be a stamp printer, it could be a laser. Whatever you think, as long as you can pull data from that system, put it into Fabscape, it's a good candidate to be made into equipment that is attached to a driver. So one of the things that is added to this system by default is what we call a dummy driver. This thing doesn't really talk to any specific tool all it's doing is generating some fake information on the fly and pushing it into Fabscape to allow us to kind of play around with, it, with the system and see oh, what this would look like for an actual driver talking to an actual piece of equipment. Uh, over here, you'll see uh, the equipment is sorted into different groups. Uh, right now, we only have the original default group. Uh, but you can add additional groups in here as you want to uh, allow certain people to see certain equipments and block out other groups from seeing maybe their competitor's equipment if two competitors are running on the same system. As the admin, perhaps, you would want to see all the different groups. Uh, after that, you've got the summary screen is going to give you a little bit of information on the system, the name of the system, the IP address on the system. As you can see there, we've got our nice little loopback address since we're just generating fake data, serial number for the system, as well as the type of equipment that it is. Uh, below that, you're greeted with a nice little splash of different graphs showing you all sorts of little informational and bobs. Information here is written and created from what we call a manifest. So every time you create a plugin and driver for Fabscape, that comes stock with a manifest. And the manifest basically describes everything that that driver or plugin does. One of those things is if you're a driver, you have equipment. Those equipments have model types. In here, the manifest has simply pre-described graphs that it thinks are pertinent to this equipment model. All of this 
is basically pulled straight from that manifest and thrown up onto the system, allowing the of the driver to explain what is the most important KPIs that you might want to see in a system right off the bat. Uh, no need to customly create these screens, but again, as the customer, we try to give it so that you can adjust your views as much as possible. So in our little GUI that we've created, we've allowed people to shuffle what they think is the most important values. And maybe if you don't care about some, just make them disappear. Next over, we're going to talk about the concept of exceptions in the Fabscape system. Now, an exception is essentially created by an equipment that says, hey, some event has happened. We've got multiple levels of these by default, the four being info, just saying, hey, something happened. Just letting you know nothing's wrong. The next one is warning, which is just the usual, hey, check engine light, maybe something is going wrong, take a look at me. Uh, and then the next one up is error. This is what we describe something that is taking this equipment out of commission. It can no longer properly function for what it's supposed to be doing. And finally, there is a fatal error. This is an error that is created by the equipment that is saying something has happened on me that is bad enough that it may be a danger to uh, anybody in the surrounding area or humans that are working on me. So fatal errors are pretty rare, but it's nice to have just so that you can uh, have that very stream of, let's take a look at this here. Um, so all this is, is just a list that's pulled from the driver uh, in chronological order, letting you know, hey, these are the kind of events that happened on the system. Look at me or not. The next one is what we call the compare screen. What this does here is it lists out all the different parameter types that are stored within the system. So when you create an equipment, also defining what parameters you want to have available in Fabscape. So for this dummy driver, we've added the following parameters within that manifest that I spoke of earlier. We've added bandwidth, voltage, pressure, wavelength, shots, and shots daily. So all this is doing here is just using the Fabscape backend to grab the most recent value for all of those different things for my selected equipment. And oftentimes, we know our users out in the field like to take a look at all the equipment of the same type and just see how it's running at a ad level. You, if you've got one dog machine, you want to know, maybe get it some maintenance. So the feature we added here specifically for that was to compare targets. Let's toss in equipment one here, and we can see here, highlighted in red, all the differences. Say if these weren't uh, ongoing values, maybe you had some configuration parameters that you want to be the same on all your tools. Well, that would show up, hopefully, as white across the board being all the same. So this is a quick and easy way to kind of look at the most recent values for all the parameters you have up is the concept of modules in Fabscape it is carried out by this little tab. So the idea being is every equipment probably has subparts that are big enough and important enough that they should be tracked independently and maybe they've got some KPIs associated with them that say, hey, this needs to be replaced at X date or at X time. Uh, for our system here, we've got a chamber, a controller, and a filter. I'm going to concentrate on the filter in this case and say put this thing as like a filter in your car. You've got so many miles before you're supposed to replace your filter. In this specific driver, instead of miles, we're doing projected usage in shots. For that shots parameter that I showed you previously, well, the idea is that that would count up to 
wherever your filter needs to be replaced. You would replace your filter and you would reset that counter. Inside your manifest again, you've said, I have these three parts and for my filter, I project that it's gonna need a shot. 5,000 shots and you need to replace this thing. Now the system is just grabbing the most recent value for those shots and it's the, hey, you've only shot 1,600 of those pulses. Should be fine, you've only used 6%. Call the back end, you can also request a forecasted replacement date based on that counter. This is built into the back end. All you do is go, hey, for this equipment, I wanna know when the things need to be replaced. What it's gonna do is it's gonna look at, as your parameters have been entered in for shots, it's gonna tell you, hey, you've been using, on average, the last 30 days per of shots, and we're gonna take your current usage versus your projected usage and plan out when you're gonna to need to replace that. So it's gonna throw you a quick little forecasted replacement date based on that. So, say I was, ow, I'm, I'm the head of mechanical repairs at my, my fab. I know that these filters are really important to get replaced, but we don't keep a big stock of them on hand. So I need to get these things ordered two weeks in advance for all of these. So instead of going around each day and manually checking each machine, maybe I could go ahead and take the initiative to write a plugin for Fabscape. It doesn't even need to have any front end. All it needs to do is call two back end APIs in the Fabscape system. First one is, hey, I need to get all the equipment of this type. See the filter forecasted replacement for those. Then you just need to check now call, see if it's within the next two weeks that this needs to be replaced. And then you can send a notification to our notification system that also has the ability to email out notification. The idea of a very quick, small plugin that you might wanna get your feet wet with playing with Fabscape for the first time. Al, I can basically have this system automatically watch for when the filters are getting two weeks out of replacement, an email over to maybe our logistics department and copy myself, and that filter can get on order. So when it comes day to replace that filter, it's already there, I'm good to go. And the last tab in the equipment plugin is the monitor concept. So for our field service engineers, oftentimes we'll have one or two machines that are, it's just not playing well. Um, and there's certain KPIs that maybe are going in and out of bands and we need to know when that happens. So what you can do for this is you can set up a specific monitor for that parameter. To do that, add, add parameter. Let's take a look at bandwidth because we know equipment two, it's been having some slight bandwidth issues and we know we wanna know what's happening at the times that bandwidth is going out of spec. So we're gonna name our bandwidth upper limit, uh, choose a upper limit of five, and a lower limit of zero. And let's say a threshold of three times with a warning period 600 seconds. So if this plugin or if this driver is pulling data from this system,